All right, guys, you're back with Armchair Engineer 85. It's time that we're doing a leak down test to the 800R E-Tech Rotax. Um, what I did was I busted out my old uh, leak down tester that I had originally built for my 600 SDI. Um, I was very fortunate that this rear cap that I used for the Y-pipe just fit, and I mean just fit. I had to basically get it on there and just kind of like squeeze and ever so uh, lightly massage it to get it over there, but it fit. Uh, I had to take this um, metal worm gear clamp off here um, in order to get it on, but it fit good. Uh, one thing that I know will not fit are my intake uh, plugs because the intakes are quite a bit bigger than the 600 SDIs. Um, now, obviously I could go to the hardware store, I can find bigger plugs, but I don't wanna do that because these are, um, threaded in and RTV uh, to seal them up. Uh, that right there, as you can see, that is the uh, gauge. And then this one here will go in the other boot on the boot on this side, and it will, um, that'll, that's where I'll add my air. So a little trick that I, I, I got taught a while ago that I even used on the 600 SDI was you just take some vinyl tape and you wrap it around and around and around and you just keep doing that till it uh, seals these uh, intake ports. So that's what I'm gonna do. As you can see here, I'm gonna need a lot of tape for this one. Um, so no problem because I have a lot of vinyl tape and we're gonna do that and then we're gonna seal this up. I got my fuel injectors all installed, all torqued down. Uh, the only th other thing we're not gonna have to plug off here are these two uh, oil uh, outlets. And I might have to do up here my coolant uh, line but I'm gonna get to work on that and then we're going to leak this down and I got my fingers crossed that it doesn't leak. All right, so we got our two plugs installed. Um, this is what I used. I used double wide uh, vinyl tape and it worked perfect. If you have this, it, it works very well. And you can see here that the boots are very tight and you know, quite a bit snug. It took up all that clearance and then you just snug it down um, here with the two clamps. I've got my cap on here. It is very nice and snug. This is a two inch cap, by the way, uh, that you can get from you know any hardware store. Uh, the next size up was three inch and there was no in between. Otherwise I would have went for probably a two and a quarter, but I was able to get uh, two inches on here. So that's perfect. Uh, one little mistake I made in there in the last clip. Sorry, I pointed to the oil lines here uh, that they had to be capped off. That's incorrect. Uh, that's in the bottom end. Um, it's these two uh, pulse lines here, and I use these uh, little plugs I had in a kit. You can get them on Amazon. Um, it's for powder coating, and they fit in there perfect. You just, you know, loosen off this clamp, push that in, and that's going to be a nice, um, secure, you know, hold. Uh, and I just wanted to mention another thing. Oh, another thing is you don't need to cap this off. I'm sorry, that, that's incorrect. Your coolant, like if you're leaking air out here, that's not good. That means one of your O-rings has went bad, which would mean that if you were to start this engine, you're gonna get coolant uh, being burnt into the cylinder. Uh, so yeah, that's okay, we're good there. Um, the only thing I wanted to point out was, um, you know, everybody focuses on a compression test for the health of an engine, which is great. Uh, you know, it, it's obviously a great indicator, but an engine has the ability to create compression, but it needs to be able to hold that compression. And that is where our leak test comes in. It's great that it can make compression, but can it hold it? So that's the whole point of the leak down tester, because if you, if it can't hold it, then it's losing power. And the big other, the main problem is that it's sucking outside air in and therefore you're getting a lean mixture and that's what they call you're going you're gonna to burn down a cylinder uh, or you're going to burn the engine down that's kind of the term that you always hear in two strokes so a um, little hot tip for you guys if you're looking for a gauge like this because we're only going to be going up to five psi and when i went to a lot of um, hardware stores i couldn't find a gauge that had small increments like this they're all very very large increments which therefore makes it harder to read i went to a pool place and they sell these gauges and it was perfect. I, I, I don't, I can't remember if it was $30 or 40, but they're not cheap, but once you get them, you got them. And um, it's nice big increments here. So you're good to go. So as per the BRP uh, Rotax um, factory manual, what this engine needs to do to pass 
a, a leak down test is hold five PSI no more for three minutes. If it can do that, then this is a weld seal engine. So this is what we're, we're going to do next. All right, so we're ready to go. I've got my Milwaukee tire inflator uh, hooked up here to the uh, one intake boot. And basically what we're going to do is we're going to, um, we're going to run this up to five PSI and then we are going to uh, wait for three minutes and see if it's leaked any. I'm not gonna, you know, hold, have the camera on for three minutes, but I'm gonna show you guys the end result and I'm gonna check with a uh, timer. All right, here we go. So I went just slightly past about maybe six. So now we play the waiting game. Okay, after, um after three minutes, that is our result. So I, when I filled it up, I went a little past the five. I went just shy of six PSI. And I watched it for about two minutes and it was bleeding down ever so uh, slow. So what I did was I let it bleed down until I got to five PSI and then I set the timer. And I basically, we're past that time now. I lost one PSI um, in three minutes. It went down to four. Now, I'm not too concerned about that because from my previous experience, if you're losing that slow, that's not a bad thing over three minutes. Um, in fact, a lot of, like I remember when I did my 600 uh, SDI, I could have swore it was you, the leak down, you had to take it up to eight PSI and it was like you're allowed over five minutes to lose one or one and a half. There was something like that. They did allow for a bit of loss. Um, I'll, maybe I'll go back and reread the manual. I read it a couple times and just see if they add a little caveat in there. But um, they did not say, you know, that it should lose any. It should hold five five psi for three minutes. Um, what I've found with my experience is you will lose a bit here, like on these. Obviously, these aren't factory, and that's what I, or even here. I remember when I did my 600 SDI. That's why I really went to town with the RTV here because I was losing a bit there and even around here um i could even be losing a bit here a little bit at a time so i'm not too worried about that what i might do i don't think i'm losing any here but i'm pretty happy with those results but what i might do is i might pump it back up to five uh, psi just get a bit of soapy uh solution and just just check you know the usual suspects um and we'll go from there Okay, so I got my soapy solution here. Let's pump this back up and we're gonna check around the boots. And I bet you it's one of these boots that has a bit of a, a, a leak to it. So here we go. Five PSI, let's look for bubbles. Check our pulse lines. Oh, a little bit. Oh, here we go. And now it's starting to bubble up a bit there. The pulse lines looked a little bit. Yeah, this one right here. I'll check the other pulse line. Like I said, it's such a slow leak. This pulse line has a little bit. Check it again. Yeah, right down here, we got a little bubble action. So that is just the gauge that's leaking. That's not a big to-do. Um, that I probably did seat this one better than the other one. We'll check it. Yeah, it's not bad. You can see that bubbling there. So that's what I mean. Like this is such a slow little leak that it, you know, it's, it's you're thinking to yourself, and I followed every torque spec and you know did my best job cleaning because i would rather do this once and have to tear it all down and do it again so based on experience i found that these testers 
will leak even if you do the best job you can, which isn't a big to, uh, to do as long as you can identify that. I guess while we're doing the video, I'll just, uh, I'll check the exhaust. I, let's just have a look here. Excuse me. Okay, right there. See if the plug's leaking at all. We're getting a little bit from the pulse line. We're getting a lot from that one intake boot. Yeah, we're getting nothing here. I mean, I could, I mean, I could go up here, I could spray all this down, but I know for a fact that's not where it's coming from. This is your big, biggest culprit right here. So that was a success, which is great. I'm very happy with that. All right, so I totally forgot I had this tool, which is awesome, the Midivac uh, vacuum pump. Um, the reason why I have it here is because there is on these 800R uh, ETEX a second leak down test that you have to do. So I've got my little vinyl tube here, which is hooked to my midi vac, and I've got to set the pressure. And in here is the oil cavity, and this is basically where your oil, or sorry, your water pump and your oil pump live. And they need to be checked um, that the seals aren't worn so that your uh, your water and your oil do not mix. You've got your two seals that are on your inner crank bearings. And then on the actual shaft that houses the water pump and the oil pump, they, they run off the same shaft. They each have their own seal to separate the two. So what we have to do here is we have to do the same test. We have to pump this up to five PSI and we have to watch for uh, three minutes. So I've got my pump here. I've got it set to uh, PSI. So here we go, five PSI. Sorry for wobbling around like that. Okay, five PSI. I'm gonna give it three minutes and we're gonna check it out. Three minutes and this thing hasn't even moved. That's awesome. It's just it's just a small little cavity. I think there's about, like I said, four seals that can potentially go bad. So there's not much room for error, but if it does, yeah, that, that wouldn't be good. So we've tested that, we've confirmed that, and you know what I think? I'm All right, everybody, thanks for watching. That uh, wraps up the both uh, tests, both uh, va um, leak down tests for this 800R E-Tech motor. I'm um, really glad about this, and uh, I'm glad that I could show you guys this, and I'm glad it, it was a success. Um, like I said, this is a very, very important step to building any engine, especially a two-stroke engine. You cannot have these leak it will take the life out of the motor so fast. I mean, you hear stories about guys saying, I did a rebuild and I got 400 kilometers or whatever you want to say in miles out of it, very low, and basically it blew up. What the heck happened or it burnt down. And this is why everybody focuses on compression, but really it's not just about how much compression it makes, it's can it hold it? Because if it pulls in outside air, kaboom. Um, the only other thing I may do is I may send these away to get uh, cleaned. I can't remember what they call it, hydrosonic or something like that clean, and they balance them. Um, there is ways that you can do it yourself. It's just, it's a lot of equipment, and uh, it's not very expensive. I believe, like, you can get them for, like, $100 or 150 and they will completely clean them, flow match them, and balance the two together, and it's totally worth it to have a professional do it. So I'm going to do that because I do not want to have a leaned out condition. You know, not only can you have too much air, if you have too less fuel, it's the same um, thing. So anyways, thank you guys for watching. If you like this video, please like, comment, and subscribe. Uh, this engine is basically ready to go in. I'll see you guys later. Armchair Engineer, out.